Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. All righty, folks, we're back with you, and we have got a wonderful lady on here. I, I, you know, it's just like royalty, I guess you could say, but I know y'all have heard send in the cr- uh, clowns, uh, turn, 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 and the list just goes on and on. Miss Judy Collins, how are you? I'm so well, and I'm so glad to hear from you. I am glad to hear from you. I guarantee you, I mean, you are still out there. I mean, I know COVID shut everybody down, but you're still out there playing after, I mean. Yeah, I, I was I was uh, locked down like everybody else right. for 14 months. And then in May of 2021, mm-hmm. I started up again. So I've been back on the road now for a few months. I mean, you know, as long as you, you have made music and albums just one after the other. And I mean, just wonderful, beautiful voice that you have. I mean, are you ever going to say, okay, I've had enough. I'm just going to sit at the house. Oh, no, I guess I'm not unless I get stopped in my tracks, you know, right. and all of us do, but it just depends on when, <laughs> when some, somebody else or somewhere decides it's time. I won't do that. I think, I think that whatever happens, I'll be doing what I love. Well, now you do a great job and I, you know, I just, I just love the fact that you're still out there. Cause a lot of people, you know, they're like, okay, I've had enough. I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore, but you are still out there. And it's, I mean, it's hard to be out on the road traveling from place to it place. It's hard. You know, people don't have any idea that you get paid for the travel and uh, it is an enormous amount of energy and time and work to do it. But that's how you get to the stage. That's how you get to Carnegie Hall, among other places. Oh, man, that had to be. I mean, Carnegie Hall, my, I, I don't know. I probably just walk out on the stage and stutter. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you have. Oh, you get, you get the shot of energy when you walk out there. You do more than stutter, I'm sure. I cannot imagine. I mean, golly, some of the places you played and the, and the things that you've done. But now you've actually got a new album. I'm, I'm going to call it an album. Things have changed so much over the years. You know, used to it was singles, and then it went to albums and CDs. And, uh, you know, it's kind of everything's digital now. But you've got a new album coming out. Yes, I do. It will be vinyl. It's hard to get in line to get the vinyl made because now all the kids want it. And uh, But hell, uh, Spellbound is the name of my new album. Right. And it's coming out in three days. Today's the 22nd. It comes out on the 25th of February. And uh, it's got all my own songs on it, songs that I've written in the past two or three years. Wow. I can't wait to hear it. So I have... I'm thrilled because it's the first time I've done that. You know, I've recorded so many other songs and had such great success with many of them. Right. But now it's time to turn my attention inward again. And uh, I'm very, very happy with the writing. I, I really love it. So well, it I made c- me happy. I can't wait to hear it. Now, we're talking to Judy Collins. Y'all can go to judycollins.com, and she has got everything going on here. What is the title name of the album going to be? It's called Spellbound. And okay, can you tell? And that's obviously the song that you is that the song that's going to be the the lead song, or is that just the name of the album? It's the name of the album, and uh, it's it's the first song on the album, and of course people will listen to it. I the first single it was called is called. It was released a few days ago, and it's called When I Was a Girl in Colorado. Right. And people seem to like that song a lot. I certainly do. And um, you know, it goes into my history. But I've written I've written a number of songs that I think it sounds like and it is very autobiographical. So I'm looking forward to seeing how people take to that, shine to that. So I mean, with the career that you had, I mean they have, they've got to be at least fifty or sixty songs on it if you're doing a biography of your of your career and your life. I mean, golly, how do you get it down to ten or so songs? Well, that's right, but I've I've released a song or two mm-hmm. on every album since 1967. What? When um, my let's see, uh, since you've asked, and Albatross and uh, Skyfell were on that album, and then each album subsequent that, and as you said, I've done something like 55 albums. Every every album that I do from that time on 
will have one or two of my own songs on it. Uh, the next album after after Wildflowers was uh, Who Knows Where the Time Goes, and I put a song I wrote called My Father on that album. Right. And then then came uh, other all, all all the other albums since then right. have always had one or two of my songs on them. So it's a collection. You're right. It's probably a hundred songs over the years. Oh, that is so fan. I mean, you're and not just music. You actually you got books. You've released books. I don't know how many. Probably six, eight, ten books that you've released. Yeah, that. six, eight, something like that. Working on a new one. Always working on something. Right. <laughs> that is so funny. Trying you know? to get something out. But you know the creative side of, of artists that they don't realize with the uh, the music that they it does. I mean, I know a lot of people we interview and they've got books they've wrote and paintings. Some people paint and this that. And other. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's yeah. I guess it's just in you and it's got to come out. But your voice is just it absolutely. It has to come. Yeah. Yep. It You're... has to come out. That's the thing. It has to come out. That's that's it. And you're, you're... that's the truth. And if I wasn't, you know, I'm on the road, of course. Right. Which means that I get to perform, let's say, three out of seven three out of six days right usually about that i mean I, i'm out i'm singing for about six months if you added it all up right every year but it's scattered through the year but that's why i'm able to i like that's what keeps me going i agree yep i agree and and the thing about it it's not just you but it's other people that listen to your music to just can't wait to hear the next song and i mean it's like okay we need another. yeah 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 you need they're another. very eager to hear what i'm doing and that's interesting yeah my sister called me and she said who is this song about it's called there's a song on the album called so alive she, she said who is this that you're talking about and it's a song about greenwich village and it's a song about a love affair that I and she said, "Who is the person?" Yeah, and I said, "Well, it was a guy named David Blue. Nobody probably remembers David Blue, but he was a very good songwriter right. and a very sweet guy. And um, he had this single bed in his house. And I told her, I said it was like a torture chamber, and probably it was meant to keep everybody out of his life. <laughs> right. That is so funny. That is so funny." Now you, I mean, on top of all this, now do you you actually have a a podcast that you're doing too, right? I do, I do. I've done some that are kind of backed up. I haven't, they haven't all been released yet. Right. So there's one with that I've released them with uh, 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 Jeff Daniels. Oh yeah, and the wonderful artist who's also an actor. He's great, and with the uh, Clive Davis. Clive Davis is coming out. Oh wow! I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure all of them. Uh, Christian Amanpour is the one that's coming out. Right. And um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I love I love doing the podcast. I love to talk. I love to have talks with friends, and I can be nosy and you know poke around in their lives and ask them things that they they probably haven't been asked before. When I was talking to uh, Clive Davis. He's a friend. I have never been a client of his, right. but I'm asked. I just was in, you know, I go to his parties. One of his birthdays is coming up, so we'll go up to his house that for that. No, it's in New York, actually. So I've been a friend, an acquaintance, and a friend rather than a client. So I was able to, you know, talk to him in a different way than a client can. And so I said to him, um, and I've known him for. 60, right. 60 years, hard to hard to imagine, but I have. And um, my first my first lawyer in the music business, David Braun, introduced me to to uh, Clive right away in the early sixties. So I said, "Tell me something." After we talked about one thing and another, I said, "Who is the one who got away?" And he said, "That's a good question." He said, "Nobody ever asked." me that they asked me who i dumped right but they don't ask but they don't ask me who got away and i said well who was it? and she said it was harry chapin wow. wow and i now know the other side of the story because jack holson told me mm -hmm. my president of my record company of electra jack told me that he went up to pound ridge where five was living and just put down a check that was bigger than Clyde. <laughs> 
you know Clyde Davis though, man. I mean, all the the artists that he has. I mean, it's just on and on and on and on. It's on and on and on. You can just stand by and watch in wonder mm -hmm. at what he's been able to do. And I also learned learned a lot of things about him that I didn't know. I didn't know, for instance, that he wasn't in the music business. Mm -hmm. He came to Columbia because he got a job in in uh, you know the executive area of, of, of Columbia, uh, operating uh, with contracts and so on right. and so forth. But he had no no interest particularly in music. And then along came the Monterey Folk Festival. Right the Monterey Festival, and he went out there basically to see what it was all about, and he came away having having signed Janis Joplin oh, and yeah. Holding Company and um, Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. and I mean, he just loaded up on these artists because he suddenly fell in love with it. Yep, yep. He is something else. Now, let me ask you something. I want to get back to you. Uh, tell me a little bit about this song, Judy Blue Eyes by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. <laughs> well, I I went to California to make an album right. in 1968. And my producer enticed uh, Stephen to come on board and play. It was a wonderful band. It was... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Buddy, Buddy, Buddy Emmons and James Burton were came in from uh, Nashville to work on it and wow it was just great and and Stephen actually had begged David to get him on the on the on the uh sessions because he already was a fan of mine which I didn't know until we met uh, you know I didn't really know that right until 2016 when he and I went out on tour together and we did 115 shows in a wow. year and a half mm -hmm. Two hours on stage together, both of us singing together the whole time, except each of us had one song in that show. Right. Um, I didn't, I didn't really know that until that tour, and so fifty years went by, and I, I didn't know it. So we had an affair in nineteen sixty-eight, right? And uh, he wrote "Sweet Judy Blue Eyes," and. That's history, and what a great song! Oh, absolutely, what a and no, no better what person for it to be about than you. Thank you, yeah. and we got to sing it together at the end of every 115 shows. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever get tired of it? No, it's a great song. Yeah, it's it is. a song you never get tired of. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I, you know that is so funny to talk to you about all this stuff and the you know of course we're in a radio and we've just got limited time but uh, i could talk on and on and on because i love the music history the, the i like the history behind yeah, the songs it's good. i love it too I yeah love it too. yeah i love it too but we have got to get to a break and we have been talking to uh, judy collins y'all need to follow her no doubt she's got a brand new album coming out it's gonna be coming out in a couple of days judycollins.com i know that uh y'all are going to love it and i mean the the podcast one more thing about the podcast when you're doing that do you talk about some of your history too while you're talking to these other people yes it's really a conversation right. i try to keep that as a minimum and but it's enticing if i can tell a little bit of something then the per, other person will jump in with something that that right. they can respond to you right. know it, it's it's a, always a conversation. I can imagine because I mean, you're sitting there talking like to, to uh, Clyde Davis. He'd be like, "Oh, I remember that. Do you remember this?" So I'm looking forward. Yeah, to that. exactly, but, uh, exactly. Absolutely. Well, girl, I do appreciate you taking a little time and talking to our listeners down here, and we will be it's following you. And uh, y'all go to JudyCollins.com. And girl, if you got something else going on? I would love to have you back anytime. Love it. Thank you so much, darling. Have a beautiful day. You too, girl. You be safe. Thank you for spending a little time with us. And remember, you can tune in every morning at WJULradio.com at 8 a.m. Eastern. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, The Morning Dish.